All right, percussionists, you guys are looking at the advantage pages at the beginning of the book, um, A1. So we have a couple different instruments here that are represented, represented, and I want you to just focus on two of them. The xylophone, or whatever sort of mallet instrument you might have, and then also the snare drum. Okay, so the first thing, the mallet, the marimba, the xylophone, the vibraphone, the chimes, the bells, the piano, all of these instruments are laid out similar to this diagram in front of you. So this might look like a piano where we have black keys and we have white keys. All of the notes for A1 are the same. They're labeled a D. It's, it's the note that's hanging underneath the staff in the treble clef. So to find a D on your instrument, find the series of two accidental keys, the two black keys, and look for the, the natural key in between these two accidental keys. This white key, or the natural key, is your D. It's now time for a mask break. Mask break. Um, so you're going to play just this bar. The notes don't change yet, so I really want you to focus on this one bar, okay? Find that bar on your instrument, and for right now, I want you to find any of the Ds that you have on your instrument, because you're gonna have multiple Ds. On this diagram, I have three. I have one here, one in the middle, and one up at the top, okay? I don't care which one you're looking at right now, just find the D. Okay, now look at the where the placement of the note is in the staff. Is it low? Is it middle? Is it high? It's low, it's hanging below the staff. So we wanna find the low D on our instrument. Not the middle or the high one, but the low one. So maybe for you, if you have this xylophone kit, you're looking at this D bar instead of the D bar that's up here. Okay, so every time now that you see that D, that specific D, you're gonna play the D bar right here. Okay, and you should see some R's over top of the notes, or I guess in this case, they're not really notes, they're just kind of some black bars. That's going to indicate your right hand. Okay, so you're playing just with your right hand. Nothing with the left hand yet. Um, obviously, the right hand, because it's titled right hand number one. Okay, so we need to, as percussionists, have really steady time, really good tempo and pulse. So we're constantly putting the metronome on and keeping the tempo steady when we play. All right, let's go ahead and play exercise one. You play on beat one, on beat two, on beat three, on beat four. In the next measure, it's on beat one. Beat two though is a rest, so that's silence. You're just gonna think count two. You play on three, and then you think on count four again. Next measure, it's all on the downbeat for four beats. And then in the last measure, notice that you play on one, two, three, but count three is la it's sustaining into count four. Now on your instrument, you're just gonna hit beat three and let it ring until beat four, and that's it. All right, let's try to play it together. I'll play it with you, here we go. Find the D bar again, there it is. And together, one and two and ready, go. Rest, rest. Sustain. Now, you can touch your ears, right? You can touch your nose. You can touch the back of your head or your shoulder. You can touch things that you can't see. You need to be able to play this bar on your instrument without looking at it. How are you gonna be able to do that? Well, visually, you can think about the placement of these bars on the instrument, but also, if you just don't move, and you have a good, proper stroke, then you're gonna be hitting the bar in the same spot every time anyway. Why is this important? Well, you have to be able to read the notes on the paper and play the instrument, right? So because you're having to move all like this, you and looking up here, you have to kind of visually and mentally think about where all these notes are on the instrument. 
So get in a good habit now of looking at the bar and just kind of staying there. Position to block three. And just staying in that position, especially if it's only one or two notes. But getting your eyes up out of the instrument and into the music. Another great way is that if you're playing one note and then you accidentally hear that it's not the same note, you can make an adjustment. Here it is. Oh gosh, no. There it is. So you can listen and hear that difference in the pitch. All right, I'll see you in the next video when we look at A2 and A3.